Yo, what's going on everyone? Coach D here from The Shift Method Personal Training. Hope you're having a great day. Hey, this is part two of our series of practical ways for weight loss. And so if you haven't watched the first series where I talk about understanding what obesity is, finding out if you are a good candidate for weight loss and kind of some dietary tips, I'll be sure to link that down in the description below. Definitely want to check that one out first because that's going to kind of be the general platform that we're working with before we get to this part, which is talking about exercise. And again, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Thank y'all so much. And let's go ahead and jump into it. So today is all about exercise, right? So we identified that we're a good candidate from weight loss. We looked at some of those markers that I talked about from the very first episode that I posted last time about understanding if you're a good candidate. And then of course, we talked about some ways to track weight loss. And then of course, some dietary strategies that you're gonna focus on. You got that all down, you're working on it, awesome. Now, what does my exercise look like? How do I know how to structure my training so that way I'm also supporting my weight loss in the gym and working on my health and fitness goals? So we're gonna kind of break this up into two main things. We're gonna talk about, of course, your cardio. And of course, we're gonna talk about your resistance training. What each of those looks like. General rule of thumb is we wanna go with what's called our ACSM guidelines. ACSM, the American College of Sports Medicine, big research body in the field of kind of research and exercise science for understanding what is a good exercise prescription for various people to be healthy and active throughout their life. And so what we see is that ideally we wanna get about 150 minutes of moderate physical activity per week and making sure we lift weights two to three times a week, hitting all of our major muscle groups. So now we're gonna go ahead and break each of those down more specifically so you know how to kind of write a very simple workout for yourself. So let's start with cardio, right? Ideally, you wanna do 150 minutes of moderate or 75 minutes of vigorous physical activity. Now, if you're focusing on weight loss, my general recommendation is you don't do too much vigorous, if any vigorous activity at all, because if you're new to exercise or you haven't worked out in a decade, doing vigorous activity is obviously much more intense. It can make you feel like crap. Maybe you end up feeling like, you know, you finish a workout and you're like, man, I wanna throw up or I don't feel good or it makes you more sore or you get hurt. And so typically, especially in that first month or so, I tend to lean more towards the moderate intensity cardio versus the vigorous cardio. So moderate intensity cardio. Ideally, we wanna work up to getting 150 minutes of moderate intensity cardio per week. The key word is there is build up to it. So it's not like first week you're doing 30 minutes of cardio, five days a week, off the bat, let's go. That's not what I'm saying at all. We wanna gradually add more minutes to our cardio or add more days to our cardio, so we build up to that. A general recommendation is to do anywhere between 10 to 30 minutes, two to three times per week as a starting point, and then gradually add somewhere between five to 10 minutes per week until you get to that 150 minute goal. So as an example, let's say you do your cardio on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you do 20 minutes each time, that's 60 minutes a week. Next week, you add 10 minutes each time. So you go to 90 minutes then 120 minutes. And by a month in, hopefully you're getting to 150 minutes of cardio. And here's the cool thing about cardio. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be 60 minutes. We know that we can do it as little as 32 seconds, actually, in any given bout of cardio in order for it to have health benefits. So if you're someone who's really pressed for time, or maybe your life is kind of in a way where you're like, I can only do five to 10 minutes at a time, you know that that works. You can break up your cardio throughout the day into five minute increments and still hit your goal. So as an example, let's say you got kids in the morning, right? You got to take them to school, and then maybe you have a five minute window before you have to shower and get ready for work, right? You do five minutes of a walk outside, you come back in, get ready for work. Then at work, you take your lunch break, you go ahead and you do a five to 10 minute walk, you come back, you have your lunch, and then after work, same thing, you do a five, 10 minute walk and come back. And before you go to bed, maybe with the dog or you take the kids out, you do a five, 10 minute walk there. You can break it up that way and still have benefits rather than just doing everything all at once because maybe your life right now doesn't support you doing everything all at once. Now we kind of have an understanding of how many minutes we want to do, right? We want to build up to 150 minutes a week, starting somewhere around that, you know, 20 to 30 minute range per day or breaking up into smaller chunks. What exactly does moderate intensity mean? Is that like, I'm just casually walking? Does it mean I should be really out of breath? There's a couple different ways you can track it. First is heart rate, right? If you have any kind of smartwatch or any kind of tracking device, it usually will tell you like different zones or heart rates you're in. Generally speaking, somewhere around the 40 to 60% of your max heart rate is a good rule of thumb. Now, if you don't have a watch or your watch doesn't really tell you, you don't understand that, don't worry at all. There's two other ways you can check to make sure your intensity is high enough 
what we call moderate activity. First is what we call the talk test method. Meaning, if you're doing cardio, if you're talking with someone, you're with your husband or wife, or you're with your kids, and you're talking and you're able to talk completely fine without any issues, it might be a little too light. Really, when you're doing moderate intensity cardio, you should be slightly out of breath, but not so much so that it's unsustainable. So I'm sitting here talking like I am, I'm talking with my friend and everything's good and I can get off my sentence, no problem. I need to pick up the pace a little bit. So that way, hopefully, now that we're talking, yeah, I can still get my senses out right, but maybe I'm working a little bit harder, maybe I'm a little bit more labored with my breathing, and now I know I'm in a good position in terms of my intensity. The other thing that we can use is what's called RPE, which is a one to 10 scale. RPE stands for rating of perceived exertion. Fancy way of saying, how difficult is this from your perspective? And so I'll actually put the chart up here so you can see one to 10 scale. One is I'm sitting on the couch, I'm chilling, I'm watching my new favorite Netflix show, right? Right now, I just finished Presumed Innocent, phenomenal show. But again, if you're just kind of chilling, not doing any work, that's like a one. Versus 10 out of 10 max effort, you're running as fast as you can, you're going max effort, and you're gonna only last for about another 10 to 15 seconds. Doing that kind of cardio, that's a 10. For modern intensity cardio, you wanna be somewhere between a four and a six. Yeah, I'm working, I'm pushing myself, but by no means is it max effort, by no means is it unsustainable. And now we gotta talk about what type of cardio. And I'm gonna tell you the best type of cardio you can do, the number one best way to lose weight loss. You ready for it? It's whatever cardio you wanna do. People often think that cardio has to be on the treadmill, has to be on the bike. Those are great ways to get your heart rate up, to get your breathing rate up, but that's all cardio is, is finding a way that you're moving your body that gets your breathing up and gets your heart rate up. It can be swimming in the pool. It can be playing basketball outside with your friends and family. It can be playing soccer. It can be on the elliptical. It can be walking the dog, right? Whatever makes you excited and consistently going to do the cardio, that's what you should do, right? There's nothing outside of some specific muscles that may target like a bike versus a treadmill. There's nothing really super, super unique about each one. What matters is you find one that you get to do consistently and that you look forward to. Because the more barriers you can knock down, the more that you're excited to do it, the more likely that you're gonna stay consistent with it over time. Now, of course, if you are someone who is trying to lose weight, there may be some that are potentially better than others given the fact that your body has different mechanics right now. So maybe you're dealing with some knee pain or some lower back pain because the excess weight and just not being active for a while is kind of bothering you for the time being. So things like walking, an elliptical, a stationary bike, or maybe like a pool, might feel better right now. And then as you start losing weight, as your body starts building up a little bit better, maybe you can start doing some other stuff like playing a sport at a lower intensity that you enjoy. And of course, the last thing I'll say on the cardio side is although the recommendation is to be at that RP four to six or having yourself be out of breath for the talk test method that I mentioned, know that you can start a little bit lower on the intensity scale if need be, because being active in general is gonna be better than not being active, even if it's at a very low intensity. And so if you try and do, you know, this modern intensity cardio, like I said, three, four times a week, 20 minutes or so, and you're like, damn, that was really hard. Don't be discouraged. Lower the intensity a little bit, take a couple of weeks to kind of get used to this new routine and then up the intensity once you feel a little bit more comfortable, because again, at the end of the day, you do not have to kill yourself every single time you do cardio, because the last thing you want to do is worry about getting hurt and constantly feeling sore. You just want to move your body and then eventually build yourself up to do it more consistently get those minutes up, get that intensity up, because that's gonna support your weight loss goals over time. All right, now we gotta talk about lifting some weights, right? Resistance training, what does that look like exactly? So ideally, we wanna lift two to three times a week. Two is a great foundation, right? Three is what we're hopefully gonna work up to over time. When we say work out two to three times a week, we wanna do each major muscle group. So that's why I generally recommend doing full body workouts, meaning, when I go to the gym for my 30, 45, or 60 minutes, because you don't have to be in the gym for an hour, I'm making sure that I'm doing each major muscle group when I train. Major muscle groups, things like my chest, my back, my legs, my glutes, right? Hitting all the big, large muscles. Yes, you can still do smaller stuff like some arms or some calves, that's fine. But know that we're trying to target the big muscle groups first and foremost. And what's cool is a lot of these exercises that work with big muscle groups like a bench press or a row or a squat, they also work the smaller muscles too, so they're also getting a little bit of love at the same time. So now, how do I structure my workouts? Well, general rule of thumb here is, you know, sets, reps-wise, you wanna do two to three sets 
somewhere between the six to 12 rep range. Reason being, that's kind of like a moderate amount of work where, you know, doing only one set consistently probably isn't enough long-term. Doing more than three, four, five, six plus for someone who's focusing on weight loss also isn't the best support for the goal. That's getting more towards the endurance or maybe even the hypertrophy route, depending how you structure your workouts. And so two to three sets, six to 12 reps is usually a good rep range to start with. Exercise wise, somewhere between six to eight exercises. And usually what I recommend doing is trying to superset them and then eventually move to circuits. When I say superset, I mean doing two exercises back to back. That way you're being more time efficient in the gym, keep your heart rate up a little bit. So it's a nice way to kind of sneak in a little bit of cardio. And that way you're not staying at the gym again for 60, 70, 80 minutes plus. Now, of course, because it can get your heart rate up quite a bit, maybe you have to start the first couple weeks just doing one exercise at a time, and that's completely fine. But once you feel comfortable with that, putting two exercises together and eventually putting three together in a circuit, you're gonna get more work done, you're gonna keep your heart rate up, and you're gonna get out of the gym faster, which of course is gonna be great for you to be more time efficient. In terms of how we structure exercises, what I like to do, is again, we're doing full body movements or full body workouts, is I like to pair an upper body movement with a lower body movement. That way, while one part of your body is working, the other is resting. So some common examples I like to do are things like a box squat, body weight, or with a dumbbell or a kettlebell in my hand, like a goblet box squat, and then a seated cable row, right? I'm working my back, right? My traps, my lats, a little bit of my biceps with the rows, and then those are resting, and now I'm working my quads, my glutes, and my hamstrings. So entire upper body or a good portion of my upper body is working, then it gets to rest and I get to work my lower body. Or another example could be something like a dumbbell bench press and then a stationary lunge, right? Bench press, I'm working my chest, my shoulders, my tries. And then for the step up or the lunge, I'm working again, my glutes and my quads, right? Upper body's working versus lower body resting. And then I flip flop it. That's a really good way to structure it. So that way you're not getting too sore. You're not getting too fatigued over time. And you can be a lot more time efficient in the gym. In terms of intensity, what I like to use for lifting weights is what I call RIR, which stands for reps and reserve, meaning you do your set of 12 on your bench press, you put the dumbbells down and you ask yourself, you say, self, how many more reps could I have done with that exercise? If the answer is 10 more reps, it's probably too light and you can go up five to 10 pounds there. If the answer is, holy shit, I can only do one more, it was probably too heavy and you can go down five or 10 pounds a safe recommendation is somewhere around the four to five reps from reserve for each of your major exercises. And so that's a good way to determine how do I bump up or lower the weight set to set to make sure that I'm challenging myself, but of course, not gonna make myself super, super fatigued and super, super sore the next day. And then in terms of rest, a general rule of thumb is one to three minutes of rest between sets. I find usually 90 seconds to two minutes is kind of that sweet spot where if you're doing that super set, right? I'm doing that seated cable row and then that goblet box squat. I take 90 seconds to two minutes and then I go and do it again for the second and possibly third set. And then you just keep moving through your exercise like that. That's a really efficient way to get through your entire workout in roughly 45 minutes or so. And of course, just like last time we talked about dietary myths, we gotta bust a few exercise and resistance training myths here. So let me kind of break those down for you. So the first one is, and this is something that I see quite often with some clients is they think, I can just keep doing more and more exercise and not really worry too much about my diet. Now, there is a grain of truth to this. When you first start losing weight or you first start getting active, exercise is very potent for burning a crap ton of calories. Meaning, because your body isn't used to it, and you start lifting weights and doing cardio, you're gonna start burning calories like crazy and you're gonna notice the scale going down, even if you don't have your diet locked in per se. But the body's not stupid. What happens after a couple months, your body's like, oh, I know what this guy's doing. He's gonna be doing his cardio this week. He's gonna be lifting his weights this week. And your body, believe it or not, actually gets more conservative in how it utilizes energy. And it's not as easy to burn as many calories with just the weight training and cardio alone. That's why diet is so important. That's why if you had to choose between weight training slash cardio and diet, if you had to pick just one to lose weight, the diet's the more impactful one long-term because you can actually control the amount of energy going into your body versus the weight training and the cardio, eventually your body gets really, really efficient in how to manage calories and you're not gonna burn as much over time. There's still other benefits like building up your bone mineral density, helping with your blood sugar regulation, lowering your blood pressure, general energy, sleep anxiety gets better. All those things are gonna happen too, which are awesome, 
but long term, you want to make sure that, of course, you're still focusing on diet and more exercise isn't always better. I'm always going to advocate for you to exercise as much as you can, but don't think that you just need to work out seven days a week for two hours every day. That's not a long term strategy for success. Trust me. And then another very common one I see this is the last one I'll talk about is people have this idea that cardio is more important than weight training and you just need to do hours of cardio to lose weight. While it is true that cardio can burn a crap ton of calories, the problem is cardio can also have some negative side effects if you only do cardio. For example, you're not really going to build too much muscle mass doing moderate intensity or low intensity cardio. And so what little muscle mass you have on your body currently and as you're losing weight, you might end up not building any muscle. You might lose some muscle in the process of your weight loss journey versus if you add some resistance training in there, you might maintain, if not even build some more muscle. So that way you lose weight. But now you put on more muscle, which ultimately you look better. You feel better. You're stronger. Your body is in better regulation with itself. All these amazing things happen and you don't even have to worry about losing muscle mass, which is pretty damn cool. The other thing that's a little bit tricky and you can kind of think about this yourself is that cardio on average tends to make people more hungry than doing just resistance training by itself. Think about it this way. What do you think would make you more hungry? Going for, let's say, a 30 to 45 minute moderate intensity jog or a run or just lifting weights for 45 minutes? Most people would say that run or that jog or swimming in the pool for 45 minutes to an hour, they're going to be starving afterwards. Cardio tends to have this effect where it increases people's hunger quite a bit compared to just doing a weight training session. And so not that doing a lot of cardio is bad, but if you only do it, it has the potential to make you more hungry over time, which again, that fights your diet, which again, fights your weight loss goals. But if you mix in cardio and resistance training where you're not overdoing the cardio, you're still getting the benefits from the cardio training for your brain, your heart and your lungs. And then you're also getting the really good benefit for your body, for your muscles, for your joints, for resistance training or from resistance training. So that's why you want to do both of them not focus just exclusively on overdoing the cardio because that's not going to support you long term. And that's it, y'all. So now you guys from watching part one and part two, you understand, you know, how, if I'm a good candidate for weight loss, how to track it, got my diet in check. And now I know basically what to do for my weight training and my cardio. I hope y'all found this helpful. And again, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. We got daily content on the socials. If you want to take your weight loss to the next level, consider hiring me as your coach. I can work with you in person down in Boca Raton, or I can work with you virtually where I help you with your programming. Just head to theshiftmethod.org, click any of those take action buttons, fill out the form, and I'll get in contact with you as soon as possible. And as always, thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Later.